Hey folks, Dan Fedor here. I'm a little overdue for an update, so I thought I'd do another video showing off some of the stuff we've been working on. Just like last time, let's start with some concept art. Um, this is a new piece by Ashley Coed. It's New California Aerostat on Venus, aka New Cal. Um, so on Venus, the atmosphere is thick enough that what we consider a breathable atmosphere is actually a lifting gas. You could fill a balloon with our Earth oxygen and it would rise, um, I think it's at about 50 kilometers from the Venus uh, surface. Um, so in an aerostat like this, the entire uh, bubble is filled with breathable air and uh, that creates a buoyancy in, in addition to some... Um, some lifting hardware and some propulsion hardware so that they can stay stable and reposition if necessary. Um, we basically have floating cities in, in Venus. Um, this one is a former U.S. colony that has since declared independence. It's composed of a few, actually I think it's four, with one more incoming uh, modular components, modular um, aerostats, um, and they're sort of named after um, cities in California. Um, and the design of these, um, I asked Ashley to, to try and make them look ultra urban, uh, sort of like the DMC was in, in Neo Scavenger, but um, to make them look space age uh, materials. So lots of uh, metallic and plastic panels, lots of framework, not a lot of concrete or, or what we consider traditional building materials on earth. Um, extremely crowded, uh, probably a bit dirty except for some of the richer uh, areas which are mostly going to be higher elevation in the dome um, you see a lot of um, a lot of foot traffic a lot of uh, public transportation you also see uh, quite a few drone uh, drones flying around both uh, automated and piloted so again kind of kind of like the DMC um, no plants though. You'll notice there's, there's no trees, there's no plants, um, there's not a lot of humidity, the temperature is going to be high, the air is going to be dry, all of which contribute to uh, the buoyancy of the colony. Um, and this is, this is a place that players will be able to visit. Um, obviously it, it probably won't be visually as dense as what you're seeing here, but you're going to be landing in stations all across the solar system and this will be one of them. One of the other things I wanted to do was to show off some of the stuff that Michael and I have been working on over the last month and a half-ish. Um, there's been some work on um, sort of the salvage and installation um, abilities, the, uh, the menu for setting up jobs, uh, notification menu, there's been some trading stuff. Um, it's also been some uh, like manual ship maneuvering type stuff. Um, so in order to illustrate a bunch of this, uh, I've started a new character um, with the Shipbreaker background story um, starting near Kaleg. Uh, we begin with this salvage pod, it's a little tin can with life support and uh, reaction control thrusters. Um, and we're going to start looking around for a derelict in the junkyard that we can steal and make our new home. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hop into the um, nav station here. And we'll take a look around. This is uh, the same uh, course plotter as before, but I've sort of updated it with um, some new um, usability stuff. Feels a little bit more like Google Maps um, with panning and, and scroll wheel, and you can you can use the mouse to point out targets with your cursor. Um, and what we'll do is we'll zoom in to where our ship is, and I can switch to ship follow mode and start following. It, this basically centers on our ship so we don't have to keep repositioning to find ourselves. Um, and here we are. This is the junkyard orbiting K-Leg station on uh, K-Leg asteroid. Um, sorry, uh, 1036 Ganymed asteroid. And we are a ship OTBFRA. Um, and we're actually not too far away from this guy right here. Uh, so I'll switch from free to snap targeting select that guy to lock it in, and um, we'll start uh, RCS maneuvering over there, this reaction control system. Um, so we now have direct control over our ship, um, and this is for like local, local maneuvering and docking type stuff. You would normally use a fusion reactor and um, its, its thruster to get around space. This is just for um, 
civilian areas where you don't want to irradiate everyone in the station and for short short hops. Um, so you can see we're, we're moving at about 39 meters per second. Our target is 33 kilometers away. So I could lay on the accelerator a bit more um, indefinitely if I wanted and eventually get there. But uh, what I'll do instead um, is just use my debug to jump over there. So we're there, uh, I'll switch over here and we will dock and similarly I'll, I'll debug dock so we don't have to wait through that process. Um, so we're loading the ship and uh, we're gonna go check it out. Um, so the first order of business, uh, we'll get our suit on and a helmet because it's probably hard vacuum and uh, we'll grab this drill and we'll grab this laser torch um, <clears throat> then we'll head to the airlock um, and I can actually let's see, pick up this stack of so that was a series of um, hole patches there which sometimes come in handy for bridging a gap if there's a hole in the floor um, and we oops we have to tell our guy it's okay to leave the ship and now we will walk through the airlock so open our our airlock and their airlock and we are in and it looks like this is all of the equipment left over from whoever owned the ship before and this this is actually quite a treasure these are a pretty penny each and there's at least three of them here so if I was looking to make some quick cash I might just grab all these and run and go sell them but uh, let's let's take a look further into the ship um, it does look like this airlock seen better days. We've got holes in the wall here and looks like maybe some debris over there. Um, we'll go through the inner airlock though and see what the main main ship looks like. Uh, dark, no power, uh, looks like clothing and maybe some more hull patches on the ground. There's a tool over here. Some holes in the floor, all the equipment's off. Um, so one thing I might do is head back here to the reactor chamber see if we can maybe restore power to see what we're dealing with. Uh, there's a hole in the floor right by the door. We'll walk around that. And okay, so the reactor's here. There's some conduits coming over here and they go to some batteries. Um, and as you notice, there is a, a missing conduit right here. So actually there's one right there too. So what we might do is let's take a walk outside here and see if we can repair some of this. Uh, missing conduit. Um, so that might be the first one to do right there. And I might just cannibalize this guy right here. We'll uninstall. Just checking my time lapse there to see if I'm real time or not. Um, so let's let's pick that guy up. And you know what? We'll we'll grab that one too because I think I needed at least two to finish connecting the reactor to those batteries. And then we'll pick that up. So then we'll head over here, and we're going to want to drop one there. Um, so I've got one in my inventory here. I dropped it at my feet, and I will install it right there. Okay, and then we'll send you around... Oops. Send you around to the inside to finish off your job. Um, so one of the things Mike's been working on, and I'll pause here just to kind of talk about it, um, is instead of doing all this manual menu um, jockeying that I've been doing, uh, he's setting up a bunch of, of menus here for basically com painting commands on the ship. So you would say, well, I want, I want all of this connected by conduit so I'll just click that and then I'll paint the conduit there and then the AI or however many AIs there are in the ship will say oh there's jobs to do we'll come over here and we'll do those jobs so you don't have to micromanage them um, similarly there'll be some some menus here for uninstalling things or repairing things or doing actions on things or canceling existing jobs um, still under development so uh, I won't be showing that off today but that was that was the purpose of that system um, we'll drop the one that we're carrying and let's install it right here and 
We'll see if that lets us come back here. Um, go to the reactor and turn it on. Okay, so we switch on the battery, and it looks like we've got some power. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll let the system normalize here, finish its initialization, start the pumping, and switch the pump to turbo. The field coil's ready, and we'll be able to get some power going to our ship. So we're starting to get power, and I'm going to switch the batteries over to charge mode, so we won't keep draining them. And we're starting to see some life. Uh, looks like we've got some light here. Let's go back into the main chamber just to see what's going on. Looks like our heaters are back up, our air pumps are back. They're pumping, unfortunately, which is just pumping straight up into the void. Um, but for the purpose of today's demonstration, whatever. We can live with that. Um, I might just check in here. Uh, oh, we have a break somewhere. Looks like right there. So our coolers are offline, and the down, uh, the downstream pumps here will all be offline until I get that thing fixed. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of um, sort of the the rough draft of how this process is going to work. You. You can start to affect changes on the ship. You can loot the ship for stuff. Um, eventually, you'll be able to start tearing things down. Like, you can already take conduits, walls, and floors down and put them in other places to rearrange things. But um, what might be more interesting is being able to disassemble things like heaters and, and nav stations and get the either the whole object or useful parts out of that object to repair one on your ship or replace the one on your ship with something better. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show off. Um, we have since docked with Kaleg now, um, and I grabbed a few of the things from that ship, including a few of the, uh, the hull patches and some clothes and EVA suits, just to, to quickly show off some of the trade stuff we've been doing. Um, I've docked, which means I am now on the hook for a bunch of docking fees, um, and in order to pay off debts that we uh, obtain, um, what we're going to do is head over here, um, and I've set up a, a quick and dirty vendor on the station just to kind of test this out. Um, just a quick aside, I'm leaving the airlocks open here. Uh, I've paid an air exchange fee. I'm going to get your fresh air <laughs> into my ship. So um, this is one situation where you, you're happy to have the air from your ship bleed into another. Um, so I think, if he's still over here, this guy is our, I've got it paused right now, I think this is our, um, yeah, he's our, our vendor for testing purposes. So how Mario Nellum uh, is going to trade with us whenever he's ready, it looks like he's doing something. Um, no, okay, here he is. So, um, this is basically a, a quick and dirty trading screen. Um, you can see everything that How Mario has over here, everything I have over here, and these arrows basically just control which direction we're, we're selling or buying. Um, so what I'll do is I will sell off this suit, um, and let's sell off the, the EVA suit and helmet. Um, he's got food, so I'll buy some of his food. I'll buy all of his food because I don't think I have any on my pod. And um, and so um, those, like I said, those suits are worth a lot. It's 14 grand worth of suits and five grand worth of helmets. So he's going to end up paying us 19,000, um, which admittedly is not clear through this. Uh, I've already had Rovlad kind of. Uh, point out that this is not the best UI for this and we'll work on that but um, at least uh, at least what you'll see here is uh, we're consistently adding money to our bill if we put it on uh, this side and we're subtracting money from our bill on this side and if I accept you'll see my my dollar value up here uh, get adjusted accordingly um, and then 
get out of here. And what that means is we should be in pretty good shape to go up here and pay off all of these bills. Uh, so our outstanding debt for August 2079 is, is 283 credits. Um, I don't even know if I put the currency here, but um, so we can choose which of these line items we want to pay off and we'll do them all and we pay them off. Um, and so one thing you'll notice up here is, is this is red. Um, and what that means is this month we've lost more money than we've gained. And this will not turn black again until we get some sort of um, line item appearing here that, that balances the sheets. Um, now I could, and I probably should, um, add the, uh, the stuff I just sold as line items here for a transaction that does put us back in the black. Um, so I'll have to make a note to do that later. But um, at least that kind of shows off uh, some of the um, some of the process for uh, keeping your head above water financially uh, in the game. So that about does it for uh, for today's video. Um, hopefully, it showed you a couple cool things that uh, you have to look forward to when when those systems are ready and playable. Um, Still a lot more that uh, Michael and I would like to do. Uh, we've been recently chatting about a lot of the, the sort of AI dramatic uh, systems. Um, currently, the AI can can do things which are um, like satisfying emotional needs and physical needs, but um, making that a little bit more interesting to watch and also a little bit more uh, plausible. Uh, are some things that we're discussing whether you know being in a room with other people should affect your privacy not not just directly interacting with them but being near them um, things like earning and losing a person's trust specifically that person's trust so that they won't do things for you or they will do things for you you know that sort of thing um, and then eventually uh, tying that into sort of a, a larger network of of effects in the game world you know, people you can turn to in, in trouble or, or people that you need to keep your distance from because they'll bring trouble. Um, and combined with all of the sort of physical and technical things that, that are constantly threatening your ship should keep things interesting on a day-to-day -day basis as much as possible. Um, but that's, that's all down the road and a lot of work. So um, hopefully you enjoyed everything you saw today and uh, stay tuned for more updates. Have a good one.